We've had this mower now, I mean, we've used it for a good, probably, what, 25 hours, 30 hours. I don't remember what the manual said about um, checking the valve clearance and all that. I know it was in there like 25 or 50 hours or maybe 100 hours or something like that. But we're going into winter. We're only going to use this mower for a few more yards. And I would rather find out now than later if there's an issue. So before we put this up for winter, I want to go ahead and take the valve cover off, check the valve clearance, and see if we need to make that adjustment. Let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to go right down. The corner here. Jeez, that's criminy. What a pain in the ass. Make things a little bit easier. Take the spark plug out. Turn the motor. This is the G GCV 190, four stroke, um, 186 cc motor engine whatever on the uh, the Honda HRX 217 okay um, this has this doesn't have like the lifters and stuff like you see in old like older mowers that you'd have the push rod coming up from the cam and then it turns the rocker arm and the traditional rocker arm pushes down on these valves all right the this is a, a different setup it's gear driven right here so this this gear is driven I don't really want to move too much around got to be careful but it's the same principle inside these springs okay these are your valve springs and inside your springs is your valve your valve goes down and then it goes to like a cup and it seats against the head so this one seats against the head and this one seats against the head as the engine's spinning around the cam has little lobes and the lobes are hitting or in the old style the lobes are hitting a rod that comes up pushes this rod up which pushes the rocker down and up, down and up. So every time the load goes around inside the engine, it pushes the rod up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Rocker goes, rocker goes, rocker goes, rocker goes, and it pushes valve, pushes valve, pushes valve, pushes valve. Okay, that's your old style. And what happens is everything wears. Things wear out over time, right? You can see this, right? Metal wears out over time. And those rods that are coming up aren't pushing the valves down as far as they used to. And it's not opening the valve as early as it's supposed to. And it's closing it sooner than it should. Um, because the lobes on the cam are wearing out. The rods are wearing out. Everything's wearing out. So what you got to do is there's a gap that's right between the rocker arm and the valve. Which is right here. And so what you're going to have to do is get in there with a feeler gauge and you have to feel when you have your your piston all the way to the top if I can, I can do it this way it should spin pretty easy because I don't have and you see how this is moving right here see that moving you know what this has to be engaged and then it spins easier let me zip tie that handle. Hold on. Okay, watch these, watch these rocker arms. See there's play right there? That's the play you're looking for. That's where you check the gap right back in there. Watch them move. See? See how they're spinning, 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 spinning. They go up and down, up and down, up and down. This is your exhaust, right next to your exhaust. This is your carburetor intake. This is your, or your fuel inject, whatever. This is your intake. All right. So what you want to do, using a screwdriver, stick it in the spark plug hole, and very slowly spin the motor. It goes down, and it goes up, 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 all the way to the top. Right there is the top, and there'll be play. And that's where you check your top dead center. Now you can go, if you take your, your starter off right here, or 
if you reach underneath with the blade, if you have, um, if you don't have the clutch, if you're regular, just a live blade to the to the crank, you could turn this, and you see it's turning. So you can get exactly precise top dead center. And to check that, use this. Watch the screwdriver. That's going down, up, 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 going down, top dead center. And then you want to check to see if you got the play. And I do. So right now you could go ahead and you can check both of these valves. Everything should be shut. You're at top dead compression stroke. Everything shut. So people are going to say you don't have to go to top dead center. Or you, and other people are going to say, you have to go to top dead center. All right, I'm going to explain it to you like this. If you don't go to top dead center, maybe you should have. If you do go to top dead center, well, you didn't have to. If you go through this whole mess where you get your valve cover off, you get your carburetor and your air box out of the way, and the only reason why I did that was because the valve cover was such a bitch to get off because it was glued on. Um, would you rather go through this and say, maybe, maybe I should have put it to top dead center? Or would you rather go through all this and say, I put it to top dead center, I didn't really have to, but I did. What would you rather do? So just put it to top dead center. You saw what I just did. It's just that simple. You'll feel, you'll feel the the spark, the uh, piston come back up. Don't worry, you are not going to hurt your, you're not going to hurt this. Okay, I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna, now if you're cramming in there and being a jerk, you'll scar your piston. But if you're just holding it on there, you're not gonna hurt anything, all right? And then you have to, the handle at the top there to start it, you know, it's hard to pull the rope if you don't release the little brake here or whatever, that lever. Pull that lever up there, it lets this go free, pull your spark plug out, and it's easy to pull this. And then like I said, if you don't have the electric clutch underneath, you can just reach underneath there and move it by the blade. And you can find your top dead center. So now that we found top dead center, now we take our feeler gauge and we check to see if we have the proper size. We went through this manual and I went through the hours of when you're supposed to do all this stuff. Let me see if I can uh, find that manual, find that, that chart again. Hold on, I'll be right back. Valve clearance, uh, 100 hours of use or every year. All right. These items should be serviced by an authorized Honda servicing dealer unless you have the proper tools and are mechanically proficient. Refer to the Honda shop manual for service procedures. That teaches you how to do it. What we need to know is what's the gap? What size are we, do we need? What's the, the space? required right here let me get this little screwdriver see this space right here watch you see that space right there so you have this adjuster and a lock nut and this adjuster is threaded so you measure the gap between this adjuster and the valve right there okay and you do it on this side and that side again exhaust side muffler intake side carburetor okay that's very important because there might be different sizes okay so using the same manual that came with the the mower okay um, it gave you the, the the range of when you're supposed to do maintenance and stuff and it also gives you the uh, valve clearance cold all right cold that's very important that doesn't mean run your motor go cut your yard and then immediately tear into this crap for one you're gonna have a mess of oil in, in your valve cover that's gonna come pouring out for one and for two hot metal stretches cold metal shrinks so you want to make your measurements while the metal is room temp per se uh, so it gives you in millimeters your intake and your exhaust. See it right there above my hand? 
and so I converted it to inches. Now what it says is, it says the intake should be 0.15 millimeters plus or minus 0.04. So that's the intake. So what I did is I converted 0.15 uh, into inches, which is six thousandths of an inch. It was like 0 0.05 something thousandths of an inch. And since we have a point, a plus or minus window of opportunity here, I just rounded it up to 0 0.006. So my intake will be 0 0.006 and my exhaust will be 0 .008. Same rules apply, I, I just rounded it up just a little bit. I mean, and it was such a little tick. Now, I don't even think I'm gonna have to make the adjustments, but let me show you guys what you do. All right, these are feeler gauges. Um, you can buy these at any auto parts store. You can buy these at probably Walmart even. You can look online for them, and they're just metal um, sleeves if you will that are or shims even that are they have their 0 .004 and then it you're equaled millimeter right there but I always like to go inches so um, what you gotta do is find the size you need here's 0 .010 here's 0 .008 so 0 .00 now to make sure you don't have it doubled up make sure you see nine and make sure you see seven. Then you know you're dealing with only eight. All right. You see eight's a little bit thicker. Um, so you need eight. Here's seven. Here's six. So we need these two. Intake, exhaust. And then all you do is with the piston at top dead center, which it is, it's right there, and you got play in your rockers, is take your intake side, 0 .006, make sure it's clean, and attempt to get it in there. It fits. It's got some drag. It's actually, it feels a little tight, but it's plus or minus four, remember? So, I mean, I can't complain with that. It fits. It's not sloppy. Checking the exhaust, 0 0.008. That feels sloppy. But it's not. Eight's good. It's got some drag. I mean, it's not so tight that it's holding this up. You see what I'm saying? It falls. It's got some drag on it. It almost feels a little bit loose, actually. But it's not. Now, let's say it was. Let's say we took the .006 and we shoved that in here, and it's really loose, like sloppy loose, right? And say we got the eight, but it's like sloppy loose. All you do, this is a square head right here, okay? This little adjuster right here, square head. This. This is a lock nut. Hold the square head. You can find uh, drill bits. I can't remember what they're, uh, not drill bits, but you can find, um, you know, your square, whatever the hell it's called, to fit this little whatever, to go over this. But you can do it with vice grip like needle nose vice grip or something. Put your wrench on here. It's probably not a 10, but you put your wrench on here and then you lock down on your, on this. You hold this still. You 
brake torque on the lock nut and then you tighten it in or unscrew it depending on what you need for this. If this was loose as hell, you tighten this in a little bit until this is nice and got some drag on it and then you hold this perfectly still and then you lock your lock nut, take your tools away and then you check it again. And that's it. Done deal. You do that for your intake, you do that for your exhaust. It looks like we're still doing good. I should have got an hour meter. We probably don't have 50 hours on this machine. We're about half of its life before we're supposed to check it. But it's good to check it now. Um, we're going into winter and it's something we don't have to mess with. And so I'm going to be able to put this all back together and mow some yards one more time. I'm going to put about two hours, two and a half hours on this machine and then we're going to go ahead and go into winter and it's only going to be used maybe once in a while for some leaves. So we're going to be able to know going into spring that I don't have to do any major service to this machine. It's doing pretty good. We do have other things that we can do and we will do. Uh, we'll continue to adjust on the drive cable and sharpen the blades and oil and things like that. We will do. Uh, but right now we just don't have to mess with that stuff. So anyways, I want to talk to you guys real quick about this valve cover gas, uh, the valve cover. This valve cover was a bear to get off. All right, you see these these ears right here? These go up top. Let's go up here. This is your mating sealing surface right here. All right, you got to be extremely careful. I took my carburetor, my air bar, I took everything off right here so I can get a screwdriver down this seam, right, like this. This was on here like this and, and I went in like this and I tapped it down the seam to split it open then I peeled it with my hands away. You do not want to take a screwdriver and go like this and pry it out. You'll never get a proper mating surface on your head. All right. So you see the state of which we're in. The carburetor, the air box, the choke, everything's out of the way so I could get this off without damaging it. The ears are a little bit crooked, but that's okay. The ears will straighten right back out. I'm not worried about that, but you don't want to mess up your mating surface. When you get it apart, razor blade this clean. All right, get all this nice and clean and go to the lawnmower shop. They're probably not gonna have gaskets for this, but they're gonna have the gasket maker. Have the people explain to you how to use it. You put a bead around, some stuff you let sit, some stuff you don't. Put a bead around it, line it up, torque it down. All right, your manual, depending on your mower, will tell you what your torque is. So make sure you're careful about that. Okay, um, one other thing is you guys, as you see, this is the cam right here. Instead of it being in the engine, this is the cam. Is there another cam in there? Oh, I don't know. But this is the cam out here, it's got the lobes. So as this is spinning, see how this comes out and it comes to a point? See how this comes to a point and then goes back down? Watch this. I'm going to spin the motor over by turning the blades. See that lobe? And now the lobe hits the other side. So there's one lobe on here and that's how it's opening and closing those rockers. Sorry, that was my one of my partners from work. Um, so you see it's got like a lobe in there and that lobe is hitting this as a push arm on this side and then the lobe comes around and it hits way back in here like a push arm there and that's, that's moving this rocker. That's what's doing it. Um, so, but basically, here's your cam right here. Instead of it being inside, um, I guess out here. I don't know. That's I've never seen that before. But hey, who am I? You know what I mean? I don't know. Whatever. So we're gonna button it up and leave it. Now, off camera because it's tedious, stupid work. Get a razor blade. Take a towel. Wrap a towel over your valve springs and your rocker arms and tuck it in.
See what I'm doing here with the screwdriver? Nice and easy. Nice and gentle. Now, take a razor blade and scrape this shit off. That old seal needs to come off. Get that off with a razor blade. All right. When you're doing the sides, scrape down, scrape down, and then when you're done and you're doing the bottom, scrape down. Let it fall down. Okay, you don't want this shit falling into here. It's not going to hurt anything because it's kind of like a rubber crap, but we don't have filters on these little machines, so you don't want any debris in your oil because that will cause some type of a something, right? So it's not going to get caught in the oil filter. It's going to be circulating around, so use a towel. Even if you got to use a paper towel, I would rather you use your wife's washcloth, but stick it in there and then scrape this all off with the... Uh, with a razor blade. Alright? Put it put your valve cover back together, seal it up nice, stand the mower up a little bit if you have to. Wipe all this oil off. Alright. Stand it up so oil pulls backwards and doesn't come to your seal. Put your sealed valve cover on, torque it down to what the book says to do, and then and leave it. Okay. You're done for the day. Don't touch it again. Even if it says it doesn't need to set up. Let the stuff set up for at least 24 hours before you pull that cord and, and start building up some pressure and heat and stuff like that, all right? Give it 24 hours. That's just, maybe you don't have to. People might say you don't have to. Why not? Why not just give it a little bit of time? Because you don't want oil dripping. You don't, you know what I mean? You don't want that nightmare. All right, so that is that. Um, that's how you adjust the valves on the Honda GCV190. Cool. Tell me about the whistle.